Let me just jump in here and try and reshare it. What's up, Jason? Good to see you, man. See if I can, can I, I'm gonna try and share it with my, let's see. Can I go into your post where you tagged me and share it or do I gotta go into the live? Uh, you can go into the event too. Okay. So what's going on, man? Crazy world we're in, isn't it? Yeah. I know, man. Well, we had we had a we had a cool little uh, happy hour last night, didn't we? That was we did. Cool. Was, you know, I think a lot of people are getting into that, Jason. I think a lot of people are um, finding ways to to leverage the tools that we have available to us. Uh, Zoom being one, Facebook, Google Hangouts, uh, Facebook or Microsoft Teams. Uh, gosh, even just FaceTime, you know, and and, and yeah, you know, old fashioned. Um, old fashioned phone calls. You know, Jason, I'm not sure if you know this cause you're, you're in the younger generation, but you know, you know, inside the iPhone, there's an actual phone in there. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, like, like a, like, like a yeah, phone. you can, you can dial people, reach out and touch someone. And it's a, uh, it is, it is kind of cool. Cause, cause admit it, you know, in the last week or so, you know, a lot of times when your phone buzzes, it's almost like, I'm just gonna let it go to voicemail, but you yeah. kind of glance at it to see who's calling. But sometimes you're like, Oh my gosh, I haven't talked to him in a while. And you pick up the phone you know, just to have a conversation You're like that's cool. Even if it's a couple minute catch up. And I think, I think people should be taking advantage of this time right now to, to do that. I mean, people, you know, you and I have been busy. We're on, I think this is my second of seven or seven, six Zooms I'm on today. Uh, Jeez. Facebook lives. Um, and, but that's great because I'm on with, I was on with our company. I'm on with you. I'm on with yeah. our local office. Uh, then later this afternoon, I'm going to be on with a, a a coal banker friend of mine down in Alabama doing a little session for his company. Nice. Then I'm jumping on to the uh, RE bar camp in Nashville to, the, to facilitate a session. Then I'm jumping on with some friends from around the country that I've met through the Inman connect crowd. And so, you know, kind of to the point of this conversation, you know, it's, it's all relationships that we're kind of bringing together. Last night I hosted a, a zoom kind of happy hour with my fraternity brothers from the university of Florida. And Jason, some of these guys had not seen each other in literally 30 years. And, I, and, and, the, Jeez, man. and the, the nice emails and text messages I got when we were done from, the, from my brother saying, thanks, Carp, for leading that. That was great. Like, picked me up, needed the boost. Great to see my brothers. Um, and it was so simple. And so we just, everyone was like, can we please do it again? And so we're going to do it next month or next week. And we'll keep doing it, I guess, until we maybe get out. But here's the key, I think, that you and I and everybody needs to learn is when this pandemic is over, why would we stop doing those things? If it brings energy to people and it brings joy to people, maybe we don't have to do them weekly, but what if we did them quarterly? You know, yeah. what, if we, what if we learn from this to say, gosh, you know, maybe we just need to stay connected more in a busy world. Why don't we leverage a technology like Zoom? Why don't we leverage well, a, you know, a, a meetup in real life more often? You know? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you too. Like, so, you know, with, with everything going on right now, obviously, you know, having these digital interactions that is the only way that we can interact. But do you think this is going to shift the way that we communicate moving, moving forward after the pandemic is over and we kind of get back to what is normal, what that may look like? But do you think this kind of digital conversations, the digital conversations, whether it's on social media or, or, or through your phone, do you think that that landscape is going to shift in how we communicate? And, and if it does, how, how do you see that shifting? Well, I think, you know, I think everybody is going to maybe slow down a little bit. You know, personal relationships, I think, are going to be even that much more impactful. You know, I mean, I was just listening to an interview today that Brad inman has been doing a nice little series of, of, you know, podcast interviews with kind of leaders in the industry. He's kind of talked to all the big broker owners um, from Realogy and Keller Williams and Remax and Century 21. And today's, or yesterday's session, he spoke with Brian Buffini. And, you know, the fact is, is that there's, at some point in time, it seems like uh, everyone is going to know someone who was affected in some form or fashion. I mean, we've all been affected, right, Jason? Um, right. So I just think it's going to bring transparency and ge what's the right word? Gen gen genuine, genuineness to the, yeah. to the table. Um, and I think, I think people, when they say, Hey, let's get together. Um, maybe people listen to that for what it is. It's, it's let's yeah. get together. And if we, as you know, a lot of our people may be listening to this, Jason, are in a sales position, right? Mortgage title, real estate. Um, if when we say let's get together, we can make sure that people don't hear that as, Let's get together so I can sell you something. Um, right. If, if, if people don't use that as their shield, um, and it truly is, let's get together. And I think that's how it's going to evolve and change. And, and this is, uh, you know, you know we, we have a chance to sort of make that paradigm shift to 
honestly trying to get together in a relationship standpoint. And if a result of it, uh, if a result of it is a sale down the road or an opportunity to help or an opportunity to partner with somebody, that's great. But the reason was a relationship. It's a relationship. So, you know, and obviously social use is at its all time high right now. Yeah. So, you know, especially as, as real estate professionals, you know, we, we see this all the time. We, we you know, you see it in your newsfeed, uh, you know, highlights and, 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 and added value posts. And, you know, th there's so much, there's so many variables of content being posted in the newsfeed, but in your, in your perspective, what can us as real estate professionals be doing to drive those deeper relationships uh, with our sphere on social media through the content that we're pushing out? Where do you see that happening? Where's that, where's that opening for, for more deeper relationships and conversations on social? Well, once again, uh, we are, I've sent in a couple blog posts uh, in the last week or so and shared out to some leaders around the country. I think right now is the time to stay connected, but not be connected in a sales standpoint. Uh, we should be reaching out to ask people if we can help them. Uh, do they need any help? Is there anything I can do to help? Um, and, and if our service or product is something they need, then let them say that. But um, asking to help. And another thing I've, I've mentioned, Jason, on the backside of this is asking for help. I think we're all a little bit scared. We're all a bit nervous. We're all a little bit un, un, um, uncomfortable or, or you know, un, unusual footing right now. And so yeah. asking for help, is not, there's nothing wrong with that. And so, you know, if someone in your company, Jason, maybe they just don't feel comfortable because their, their kid's sick or their, their mom's sick and they say, I got to go across town to get something signed. If they just reached out and sent an email to your office, there'd be 50 people in your company that would say, I'll do it for you. Right. Hmm. And I think a lot of people are just maybe afraid to ask for help. And so that's a big thing. And, you know, let me, let me leave the word ask on the table. I think on social media, when you ask questions, you get so much more engagement. Yeah. And that's been, that's been one of my tricks or one of my tips that I asking the right questions though too, right? Asking yeah. The asking, right. The, asking the right questions, but like on Facebook, you know, I, I always say on Facebook, if you want more engagement, ask more questions in fewer periods. Right. Use, use more question marks in fewer periods. And you see, Jason, I do that really, you know, I think I do, I do that well. Where I'll ask a question that is kind of a, you know, an easy question to answer, but it, mm -hmm. it, it's not the same answer for everybody. So, you know, what's your favorite band? Uh, you know, um, you know, I've been doing a lot of sports ones. I, I'm a big sports fan, Jason, as you know. And so I, I've been asking a question each day uh, with the hashtag I miss sports and it's getting lots of engagement, right? Favorite tradition in sports, favorite food that's associated with a sporting event or team. Uh, you know, so people are able to log in and answer Dodger dogs and Fenway Franks and pimento and cheese sandwiches at Augusta National and just things like that, that, that get engagement, which, you know, Jason, and probably hopefully people on this, on this session know, um, the more engagement you get on your posts, the more likely your posts are to show up on someone else's feed. Right. And so right. if you're and those people engaging yeah. and those people engaging, right. And so if you ask questions, you're eliciting someone in their feed to stop and, and, and do something. You're stopping their, their stream of thought and capturing their top of mind awareness for a second. And if I can keep bringing those people back to me, then I have a better chance of being in front of them when they have a real estate need or a mortgage need or a title need or a home cleaning need or a landscaping need or whatever service you might provide. And so asking questions, whereas just if you just put a, a statement with a period, what are, what right, are you supposed to do other, other than maybe like it? Right. Exactly. Right. And, and, and the objective is conversations, right? The objective. And I like what you do, Sean, on, on when you're asking those questions, number one, they're relevant to who you are, your passion, your interest, right? They're about sure. sports, right? And that's relevant. It's easy to communicate, easy, easy to drive the conversations when the content, and the questions are revolved around the person asking the question. But the other thing I noticed about your content too, Sean, that's very attractive. And I think a lot of us can learn from is that you're not leaving that question up and forgetting about it. You're driving the conversation in the comments and you're tagging other people that are relative to some of those comments. Like you're pulling other people into the conversation and you look at some of these posts, these questions that you ask simple questions, right? Like what's your favorite, you know, sports moment or whatever. And, and there's 500 comments and a third of those or even more are you driving further conversations and me responding back. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's critical. I think once again, making sure people uh, acknowledge that they've been seen, even if I just scroll through and like a few of the comments, but then comment on a few here and there. And, you know, um, you know, it, let's, let's just say that you answered something and then, and then later down the thread, Sam Hardy answered something. I might go into Sam's comment and say, looks like you and Jason Perkins might have the same, you know, interests or something. And all of a sudden it tags you and so there's a lot of cool ways you can do that, right? And 
And, yeah. um, and, and, and staying engaged in that is, is, is important. You know, if you think about, you know, from a strategy standpoint, and I don't really, I don't really think of it as a strategy anymore, Jason, a lot of people that are on there, a lot, it's just part of, part of what we do now. But I, I equate it to this. If you and I and a bunch of people, uh, when this all is all said and done, you know, we go to the funny bone here in Columbus, Ohio, we go to see some live stand up comedy, which I think is just a great, it's always one of those things when you go to it, you're like, man, we should do this more often. It's so fun. And, and Dave Spruip with the Funny Bone does an amazing job there. But, you know, when you see your favorite comedians, Jason, what makes you laugh? The stuff that you relate to. Right. Exactly. When you're laughing at the table and you look at your buddies and you're like, oh, my God, that happened to me yesterday. Right. And it's, it's that real <laughs> right. life stuff. And so that's why on Facebook, when you can be genuine, when you can be real, you don't always have to be this greatest hits, you know, uh, person that all of a sudden it's like, yeah, that, that guy was really funny because it's. It's, he's like me. It's, that's why Jim Gaffigan and John Heffron and those guys are so relatable because they're dads and they're husbands and they're, you know, not, you know, bodybuilder Adonis, you know, movie stars in, in, in Hollywood and they're relatable. And I think, right. especially today, I think, Jason, if you can be relatable, look, that's why I keep going back to every one of us is un, uncertain about what's happening next. And so why act like, you know, you know, don't act like, you know, just be there to say, I'm here in the now and what can I do in the now to help you smile, laugh, answer questions, solve a problem, have some fun, whatever it may be? Yeah, I think I think to your point too, Sean, a lot of times we don't know how to act on social media and we'll put a, a mask on a little bit to, to portray an image that we think is the most valuable for our brand or our business. But I think to your point, you know, we need to be being we need to be showcasing our vulnerabilities a little bit more, like especially during this time, that's how we connect. And again, to your point, that's how we drive relevancy and conversation and connection, right? Social media is at, at, its, at its core is, a, is an avenue for connection. And that's how we should be thinking about it. Not, not as a, hey, look at me, here's what I can do, especially during these times, we need to be looking at this as a way we connect with our sphere and our friends, uh, that's going to drive more meaningful interactions and, and conversations down the road. Cause at this point, this is the one of very few avenues that we're able to connect with, with friends and family. Yeah. So we, yeah. And, and there, so, you know, and, and there's different uh, channels inside social media, right? There's the Facebook channel. There's, I, I really enjoy the Twitter channel. I love the fast pace of the stream. I love the, the randomness of a stream, so to speak. And, Reminds me of one of my favorite quotes, you know, it says, no man can ever stand in the same river twice for he's not the same man and it's not the same river. You know? <laughs> and, and that's what I love about, you know, Twitter is that I can log in this morning or this afternoon and it's fresh new content. It's, yeah. it's oh, this guy's on today. It, it's the same thing. That if you, if you literally, I'm not, I don't watch the news, but if you watch the news and you watch the morning shows and then you watch the lunchtime news and you watch the nightly news and then you watch maybe the national news, they're, they're different audiences, right? Um, the morning shows right. are fun and irreverent and get your cup of coffee and fire up your day. And, and there's a little bit of the, the, the news, but then there's also the, you know, how to make a Easter bonnet for your kids. And, and here's the sports play of the day. And, and then the lunchtime crowd is different and the afternoon crowd is different. Same, same as morning drive time on radio is different than, you know, than midday. The, the, so what's your message? What's your content? Who's your audience? And, yeah, and what I think channel so. are you on? And what, in what channel and also within those channels, what platforms, right? Because there's so many different variables of platforms within channels, right? So take for it, let's just look at Facebook, right? You do a lot of, of newsfeed posts, right? You do a lot of open ended questions in the newsfeed posts, but it, it, that's not the only avenue. That's your avenue. It works really well for your audience, but the use case of also stories, right? Stories is an amazing yeah. place to drive those one-on-one -on -one conversations you know, especially using, uh, you know, using the actual questions option within stories, right? So I can actually ask a question and drive a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And you're going to drive a lot of times you're going to drive even sometimes more engagement because the conversation is private, right? Yeah. So if I'm asking that question, I'm having a real one-on-one -on -one conversation. I'm driving it, right? So stories is a great use case. Obviously the newsfeed, you know, those open-ended conversations and keeping it driving. I had a family member uh, yesterday, he, he posted uh, a very simple image. The image said, uh, make me choose between two bands. And in 24 hours, it had over 600 comments, right? Wow. And this was sticking at the top, not only of his newsfeed, but everybody else's, but 
he's driving, like he's having conversations with people he hasn't talked to in years, right? Yeah. So, and again, to your point, it's easy, it's relevant, it's who they are. It's an easy conversation to have. So I think that, you know, as a takeaway for us real estate agents, like you don't, we don't have to be putting on a mask or, or trying to, to be this kind of articulate, you know, professional at this time right now is to showcase yourself and your vulnerabilities and also be authentic to yourself and, and your friends in your sphere. Jason, I think, I think you said it earlier when you were talking about the stories and building a question into a story. See, when you're on a story or on your post on any of the channels and you post something, you're going one to many, right? When you're sending it out to everyone on your feed, you're sending it out one to many, which is creating a connection. But when you go one to one, you're creating a relationship, right? So when you go one to many, it's a connection. When you go one to one, it's a relationship. And how many times can you take the connection down to the relationship level? And if on a story, you can get five or six or 10 responses. Like look at your Facebook or your Instagram stories. I, I don't use Facebook stories. I use Instagram stories. And I know I could do both. But if you look at your stories, you might see that you got 145 views, but you got six comments about that. Now, what do you pay most attention to, Jason? The number of views you got or the six comments? Of course, the comments, right? The six comments. Yeah. And in most cases, you're going to comment back to the comment. Even if you just heart the comment, if you, even if you just like the comment, what happens on your end? If I like your comment, you get notified that Sean Carpenter liked your comment. So once again, my name comes back into that front of your mind for a split second, but then maybe makes you go back and say like, oh, I wonder who else commented on Carp's post or things like that. So I love the stories thing because once again, there goes back to your point of it lets people see that you're a real person. When you're, when you're showing your workouts or you're training for your triathlons or you're showing that Lennon's walking or doing something or eating an apple for the first time or whatever it might be, when people can see behind the scenes and gosh, with as many people that watch HGTV and TLC and Bravo for real estate, to see that the back, the behind the scenes of a real behind estate brand, agent that yeah. they know here in town, I think that's kind of cool. Well, and then it's, it's, it's to your point, every time, somebody is responding to a story, it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity to strengthen that relationship. So I encourage anybody, you know, not only just to, to like the, the comment or the response back, but to, this is your opportunity to now drive a deeper relationship and a conversation with that individual. I had a great conversation with somebody yesterday with a friend that I haven't talked to in a while. And he, all, he liked, he liked one of my stories and it turned into a, like a novel of conversation and I was so thankful and grateful of that opportunity because literally all I did was like it. And I said, Hey man, how are you? What's going on? And from there, just, you know, it just adjusted to a full on conversation. I think, I think we have the next, you know, at least here in Ohio, you know, it's, it's April 2nd. We have the next 30 days to take the online offline, to yes. take the online offline to, and to drive the offline online, right? Meet someone in real life, connect with them on social media. Right? Find out where they're at. Are they on LinkedIn? Are they on Facebook? Are they on Instagram? You don't need to follow on all of them. But once again, turn the online offline. Take those opportunities to say, hey, Jason, when this is all said and done, let's get together and, you know, uh, you know, do this. Let's take our kids to the park. Let's, let's, let's meet up for a bourbon. Let's, you know, take me to one of your CrossFit classes, whatever it may be. And whatever those things are, when you can convert that online, one like turned into a, you know, a book of conversation, that's kind of cool. Right? Yeah. Heck yeah, it is. Um, and, and I, I want to shift a little bit too, Sean, because I think I get this question a lot and I hear this question a lot. And I'm sure you do too, but there's a lot of, um, you know, a lot of times we, we get in autopilot, right. Um, and we're sitting on the couch or we're in the kitchen and we're just kind of just scrolling or we don't know what to post, what type of content to be asking. And I think a lot of it is driven by the fear of, of what people will think about us, how people will perceive our content. And that hinders a lot of people from actually putting themselves out there and, 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 and posting content. So what advice do you give to, to, to us out there who, who do have a fear of putting ourselves out there on social media? What advice would you give us to, to kind of give us that nudge, uh, essentially to put ourselves out there on social? Well, I think one of the easiest things we can do, once again, and speak to my real estate friends out there, all real estate is local right? So look local, start there. If you're just not sure what to put, you know, a lot of people sometimes you and I probably don't Jason, but you know, people, they go on Facebook and they're like, I want to post something. And then they just look at that little cursor blinking in the status update, waiting for them to type something in. Just look local. What's happening around yeah. you? Uh, farmer's market going on, uh, something going on at your kid's school, 
Uh, is your church doing any type of events? Did you just eat a great meal uh, at a restaurant or, or local thing? I think we're, we're seeing a lot of people really go local content on stuff right now, sh helping support their local shops and their local, you know, I mean, look, if you want to do a, a promo for Home Depot or for, for Applebee's right now, great. But they have a national marketing campaign and they have brand awareness, you know, whereas if you did a little, you know, Jason, we're both living up in Arlington, Ohio, you know, if we did a little, you know, you know, video, hey guys, I'm outside Nutter Hardware picking up some things for some landscaping needs I'm doing. If you're in Upper Arlington, make sure you swing by Nutter Hardware in Kingsdale and grab yourself some popcorn on the way out. That is going to be so much more impactful for your community because everybody knows about Lowe's and Home Depot. Everybody knows about Applebee's, but when you're talking about, you know, uh, Collins Coffees or, or something local. So I think that's one tip. Look local. What's happening around you that you then can also then start to build the I'm the local expert angle. Um, also, you know, where, what, and why, you know, where are you today? What are you doing? Why are you doing it? Right? I mean, you could talk about literally, I mean, I think it's funny that some of these conversations that are happening right now, there's this faction of people, smaller faction, but there's a faction of people that have been working from home their whole life. And they're like, what's the big deal? Yeah. Whereas many of us that now are working from home and never have had to do that and have kids at home while we're trying to work at home. See, it's easy to have kids at home on the weekends, right? Because right. you're not on a webinar, you're not doing work, you're not making business phone calls. And so that, you know, talk about that, tell those stories, you know, tell, sh show how to do those things. You know, I mean, if you, back to the real life, you know, Jerrica Gilly, Jerrica Gilly is an agent with Coal Banker Brokers of the Valley out in Napa, California. And she's, uh, she's not afraid on video. She does a good job of, but she's real honest on video. She's been doing some funny videos like, where she uh, like opened up her dishwasher and she's like, I didn't know there was a little thing down here called filter. And she like showed live how she opened up her filter and then pulled it out. And then she got all these comments from people that like, I didn't know that thing was in my dishwasher either, but they all went and did it and put, cleaned it out. And so just walking around your house, what are some of those things you can share? Yeah. I mean, I think two things, right? I think that people like two things people need to realize with, when putting themselves out there with content is one, you're more interesting than you think you are. Right. <laughs> to somebody. Yeah to somebody. But then two, to caveat that, people care less about you than what you think they do. For right? sure. <laughs> right? For so sure. That, that's, your, that's your why, I think, of like, if you're like, I don't know what to post, or I don't know what to, you know, I'm afraid to put myself out there, is just remember that like, you are interesting to a lot of people. You're going to find relevancy in the content that you're putting out there. But at the end of the day, those people also are laying their head down at night and being like, oh my gosh, I can't believe what Sean posted earlier today. He is just such an idiot. I can't believe it. You know, like yeah. people don't and, care. They're not thinking about that. And, and if they're laying there, then they probably weren't my tribe anyway. You know, like right. if, they're, exactly. if, they're, right. if they're like, Sean's an idiot, then I'm like, well, I'm not trying to win that guy over. Look, Lou right. Holt says, Lou Holt says, don't tell people your problems because 90% of the people don't care. And the other 10% are glad you have them. You know? So, yes. Yes. <laughs> So, you know, that's a great point. And, and then to the other point is, you know, find your little niche. I mean, everyone out there has that, you know, there are, there are pet owners and then there are dog owners and then there are big dog owners and there are small dog owners, right? And there's multiple dog owners. And so there's different little niches. Once again, as you drill down, there's riches and niches. Uh, one, of my, one of my mentors, uh, Larry Tennis in Cincinnati, he used to say, Sean, when you're working as a buyer's agent, you just got to realize that for every dirty little house, there's a dirty little couple. And our job is just to match them up. <laughs> and so, That's awesome. so, so finding that audience to get to the right spot. And, you know, listen, I, I put a lot of stuff out on Facebook. I mean, there are some days I don't post anything. There are other days I post five or six or seven things because there's different people on at different times. It's going to show up on their feeds at different times and I'm going to hit different people. I'm pretty close to maxed out, you know, at 5,000 friends on my personal page. Um, so I, as I add new people in, I dump some people off that don't engage with me. But that doesn't mean I, I get in front of all 5,000 every day. Right. You know, I mean, look so, at how many followers you have on Instagram, Jason, and, and how many average likes or views do you get on your stories or posts? About 115, right. about 130? I mean, yeah. You know. Yeah, it, you, you hit a small percentage. And obviously, that's, that's the algorithm kicking in to make sure that we don't over annoy, right, our users, because it's all about the user experience at the end of the day on these platforms. So if you are even thinking about, oh, I don't want to overexpose myself, you're not going to the algorithm is not going to allow that to happen. But I think that that does beg the question, in your opinion, Sean, how often should we be posting content on a weekly basis? Does it even matter? Right? Do we need consistency and a cadence? Or do we need more when it's when it's available to drive value in conversation, like how should we be looking at that as far as 
is posting content. Okay. Um, I think when you have a relevant thing to share, it should be shared. Um, I'm not a fan of automating posts, uh, you know, third party paying a company to automate your social feed and they, and they decide they're going to send it out based on their research, you know, at this time, because if I have 150 agents around the country that all buy that same system, they're all automating that same thing at the same time. So if I have to follow six of those people on Twitter and I see back to back to back to back to back, they just post that, then I know they didn't post it. Someone else did. So I'm, I'm a huge anti automated posting. Now it makes sense if you're going to personalize some automated posts to post, you know, on your behalf at certain times, if it's genuine from you. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I think if, if you're posting too much, and it's not relevant, Jason, people aren't going to respond to it and they're not going right. to follow it and they could unfollow you. So you could be hurting yourself. But if you post something and you're getting 35 comments and you normally get 35 comments, then you, I think you're right on point. If you post something, all of a sudden you start getting 13 comments or no comments, then maybe, you know, you and I have both probably posted stuff that we're like, oh, I bet this gets a lot of comments. And then like three hours later, it's like, nope. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I don't, I don't delete it. I just maybe go on yeah. to something else because yeah, you know, it just didn't hit, but um, you know, so I, I don't know that there's too much. I mean, look, here's what I do know. My personal tastes, if I'm flipping through like Instagram stories and you know how you're going across the top and you can see who's posts there and he's, Oh, Jason's got something. And Jason's got three little bars across the top. I might watch all three of those. But if I see yeah. you have like 35 tick marks, you know, cause you have so many posts, I'm yeah. probably going to skip through those unless I, have always enjoyed your engagement or you say, Hey guys, it's Jason. We took Len into the zoo for the first time, had a great day. Going to share some stories here about what we did. Now I might watch that cause it'd be kind of cool to see a, a, a little baby girl walking through the zoo for the first time and see her looking at the elephants and looking at the giraffes and, you know, having a, having a snow cone or a candy or a cotton candy, but I might not watch all of it, yeah. but I might, you know, but once again, I th you probably do that too. I mean, I, th I think a lot of us are like, Oh my God, 77 stories. Yeah. You know, Yes, overkill. At Fifteen right? seconds each. You know, why not just do a Instagram live and and let me or IGTV and let me decide if I want to watch it or not. And yeah, that's, that's, that's another a, cool platform that's evolved a lot, Jason. Is IGTV. Once absolutely. again, you know, for those for the people who don't realize what that is, it's it's maybe you filming a a static video. You know, boom, I'm I'm recording a two minute conversation. I post it on my Instagram feed. Instagram quickly realizes it's more than a 60 second video. So it says, do you want to put this on IGTV? And that's why when you look at your feeds, it says Jason posted a video. And then at the end of it, of, at 59 seconds, it stops and shows what on the screen, Jason. It says, do you want to continue watching? Right. And at that point in time, you can say, oh, it's only got a minute and a half left. Let's keep watching this video. And people are, people are really starting to leverage that well as in a, in a nice way as well. It's brilliant, Sean, because it's, it's taking long form option right so like think of like youtube youtube is just a long form channel you go to youtube expecting long form content but it's brilliant what instagram did is it's, it's a short form content and they've made now the option for long form which is going to drive those conversations and drive that interaction longer right to your point like do you want to watch do you want to watch the rest of this yes or no if you're engaged with that content and what they're saying heck yeah i'm going to watch the rest of it i want to see what else they're saying because i'm engaged with it so jason here's really, here's the here's the perfect analogy or metaphor um, for, for what this is for someone like me and you, you and I go up to knock Terra brewing company this afternoon. God, I wish we could, but we want we go up to knock Terra, let's say, and we walk in and they got a couple new beers on the thing. And, and we don't say, give me a pint of that. We say, give me a taste of that. Give me a little teaser of that. And if I like it, I might get a pint. So if I yes. watch 60 seconds of your video and watch the next two minutes and I say, that was really good. The next time one of your IGTV comes up, I watch it. And then I watch the whole thing. The same way, if I really like this taster, the next time I walk in, I don't need a taster. I say, just give me a pint of that because I really like that. I know it's consistent. I know I like it. I know it matches my desires. And so great tip for agents is start putting out some video that you can put on, Inst on YouTube as a full video. You can put on Facebook as a full video, but you can put on Instagram as a IGTV video and start seeing what type of engagement you get there. And maybe you start there and then you can share it out to YouTube or, or, uh, Facebook or LinkedIn. Yeah. And I think, you know, it, it's easy to start. Anybody's wondering how to do that. Literally it's just posting as you would regularly post on Instagram. It's just, at, it's giving you that option. No, it's reading that it's more than 60 seconds. And they're saying, do you want to push it to Instagram TV? That's all you have to do. Yeah. It's going to show up as a regular video in the newsfeed. And it's to your point, Sean, it's a great way to kind of AB test. Is your long form content being watched? Is right. it valuable? 
you know? No, and, and, you know, a lot of us, uh, Jason, like what, what you do with, um, uh, you know, with, with Josh at your office, right? Like you, you might film a video and it might be three minutes, but you could clip that down into little 60 second spots or you could do it one long form. And so, you know, I, a lot of times I'll, I'll have someone film one of my presentations and I'm like, oh, that one little part where I go from this part to this part was a great little 97 second message or story and taking pieces of that. And then once again, there, that goes back to the, the idea of duplicating and replicating your content on other, other places to create more relationships back to the point of this story is how can I get in front of more people where they are, which is yep. everywhere. Right. And, and then to your point of replicating your content out, I know Gary Vaynerchuk talks about this a lot, but you don't have to create a piece of content for each channel, each platform. You can replicate that piece of content for each channel, right? Now, sure. obviously you might have to customize it a little bit for, for that channel. But I mean, if you've got an Instagram story, let's say you've got, I do this a lot, you've probably seen it, but I'll post something on LinkedIn, right? That's, that's value driven, educational. I'll take a screenshot of that, a, snip, a snippet of that, post it on my Instagram story i'll take that content make it a long form carousel on instagram with more imagery and then i'll also take that that post and do the same thing on facebook and then facebook groups and facebook stories so i just turn one piece of content into 10 different platforms by literally uh, that's all i did right and you know we're doing that right now we're taking this from zoom sharing it to youtube or sharing it to, to facebook we can record this video send it to YouTube if we want. I just took a screenshot that I can share on my Instagram stories right now. Um, a lot of people that do podcasts can, can take the words from their podcast and put it into a blog post. So once again, that repurposing of the content is huge right now. Right? Repurposing right now, Sean. <laughs> and doing the same thing, right? Yeah. So, and you know, I think a lot of people are doing that. I'm seeing that happen right now. You know, we, we, we got some pictures shared of our happy hour last night. Uh, some of my fraternity brothers shared a picture of the happy hour last night. There's probably people maybe taking pictures of this saying, listening to Sean and Jason uh, chat about relationships right now. Um, sharing that out, people might go back and say like, oh, didn't realize that was on this morning. Was there a replay? They reach out to you. Hey, Jason, I want to share that with my agents at my office at next week's meeting. Sure, I'll send you. And they might say, you might say, hey, listen from 1813 to 2142. That is really the, 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 ep, the, the heart of what we talked about, you know? Yeah. And all of a sudden they say, great, thanks for taking the 45 minute session down to three minutes of usable content. And I guarantee out of this, we could probably go back and, and analyze it, Jason, and pull up five or six or seven little snippets that we could share on social, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah, and I think that's what we should be doing. And, and a good app for that, if anybody's wondering, I use Video Shop. It's a great way to cut up your videos into short little segments. Um, and again, you can even upload it to Instagram stories and save, save those segments individually there because they automatically cut that up for you. So you can actually upload to Instagram stories It'll cut it up into, into uh, you know, 17 minute, 17 second segments. You can download those shorter segments if you'd like to. But I love the app Video Shop is a great one for cutting up your segments. Uh, Sean, do you, do you use any mobile apps for your videos? I, I, do, I use InShot. Um, InShot. Oh, InShot, yeah. Yeah, InShot I, has really become, I think, powerful. I used to use Adobe, uh, Adobe Rush maybe what it's called, but then they changed it around and they, they made some paid stuff. InShot is, is great. Uh, it takes, takes a little practice, but once again, I can just take some clips. I can now add in like a logo or words. Um, you know, I, I don't do, I don't do a lot of, uh, closed captioning, but I, yeah. you know, you can easily rev.com or something like that. You could use that, but I, I like InShot, Jason. Um, yeah. And InShot's great. It, you know, it's just, once again, getting used to playing with it. And, and I think one of the keys that I learned from my buddy, Bill Rister with InShot is, you know, if I'm going to shoot a video, uh, and I'm not sure what I want to say. I just hit record and then I just start free, you know, free, free forming my content. And just in between each pause, I just go three, two, one. And then I start my next thought and then it, and you can edit it down. Every time you say three, two, one, you just do a cut and then stitch them together. It's pretty neat. Oh, that is cool. That is, a, that's great. Hey, I've got a question for you. Well, actually, Joe, Joey Thomas asked you a question, Sean. He goes, which of your messages does your audience connect with the most? I think that's you know, uh, what type of messages do you put out there that, that has the most connection with your audience? Uh, once again, back to the, to the easy answer questions, probably gets the most engagement. Like one I put up, I think it was late last week or maybe earlier this week. I just said, when you're stressed out, who's a musician, band, or artist that you can listen to to get fired back up? It's got 200 comments. Jeez. Um, <laughs> That's great. You know, uh, so, so questions work well for me, you know, Joey, um, Here's, here's what I know will be the most real human post in the next week on someone's page 
and it happens all the time, and maybe maybe not now with COVID-19, but when the world gets back to normal, when someone posts that their pet died, it gets wow. the most engagement of any post that person will post in the next you know two years. Uh, mm-hmm. They'll get 397 little emojis, and they'll get 210 comments. And if you go back and look at that other person, that person in most cases feed normally, they get like 21 emojis and 14 comments or something like that. But, but when someone's pet dies, it's something that everyone has felt. And everyone feels like I can add something. I can say like, you know, I bet Hogan's playing with them across the rainbow bridge or whatever it might be. And it's just, it's so real. And so that's why yeah. I think we're seeing things right now that people are, are genuine and honest. And Joey, I'm sure if you just if look down your feed today, just as you're just randomly scrolling as a viewer today, look at the things that are getting lots of engagement and then maybe take that idea and, you know, the old rip off and duplicate. Like, could I post something similar to that? Uh, the big one you're seeing right now that's getting lots of comments, it's, it's just kind of become a meme right now, is what's something that's true about you that people wouldn't think is true, mm-hmm. right? And it's getting, you know, lots of, and it's usually not just one thing, it's a comment or a sentence or a story. And so like my answer I've been putting on there is, I was on a deep sea fishing boat that exploded and sank. Because on August 12th, 1980, when I was 12 years old, my grandfather was doing business in Miami. He had to call on a couple of clients. So he put me on a charter fishing boat for a four hour tour with you know a captain and a first mate and two dudes from England. We went off the coast of Miami Beach and caught fish for, four and a half, for three and a half hours. And when it's time to bring the boat back into the pier, when they fired up the boat, the engines exploded, the boat caught on fire and literally within four minutes was going under the water and we had to jump Jeez. overboard and swim to another boat. But so it's a great story. But that's what I'd say to Joey is look at what, look at what else is getting engagement. But, you know, look, the same thing you do from a sales standpoint, you're leveraging your kids and your pets, you know, so stories with your kids and your pets. Joey does a great job with that. I bet, I bet one of Joey's best um, posts was the picture of his kid going out and peeing off the back patio. Remember that last year? (laughs) He caught him on the, that was a great post, man. He caught him on the webcam or he caught him on the uh, security (laughs) camera. And I guarantee you it got tons of engagement because it was funny. It was real life. It was, it was literally uh, America's funniest home videos worthy. Oh, well, speaking of that, Sean, go, if anyone's watching this, go over to Sean Simpson's profile and check out, (laughs) he texted his, his daughter and he took a screenshot of it for April Fool's saying that his daughter is going to have to repeat fourth grade because of, because of of what's going on. And he, he takes a screenshot of it and posts it. He had, you know, he has like 50 comments because, you know, I mean, obviously it's very relevant content of what's happening, obviously, locally and globally. But, you know, we have kids, to your point. Like, we have, a lot of us have kids, and a lot of this, these questions have probably been bounced back and forth. And he's pranking his, his, his daughter with this. It was hilarious. That's great. Yeah. It's just, you know, I mean, I'm having fun right now. And look, I think we need to all be serious about everything, except we just don't need to take ourselves so seriously. Right. I mean, we're just one person out of 329 million. Um, We're very important to our loved ones and our family members, but we just don't need to be so dang serious about everything. And and the other thing I'd suggest to people is, you know, let's, let's all worry about ourselves before we worry about anybody else. Right. We can all sweep in front of our own garage before we're worrying about other garages in our neighborhood. Yeah. That's, that's awesome, Sean. I think, um, I think one thing too, um, just as we kind of like start to close this out is I think the use of, of what you do, Sean, from a personal approach, I always tell this story about you specifically, Carp, because I think it is extremely powerful in the way that we remember interactions. And I think that's what we need to be focusing on is, is creating meaningful interactions at scale. And I remember what every year for my birthday, Sean, you send me a birthday video. And you're one of two people that do that every year, only two, right? And so you think about it, majority of your friends are just posting, you know, the automated happy birthday in your profile. And you don't remember, like, you don't remember those interactions because they're, they're pretty, you know, they're pretty stale. But when you send a personalized video, it takes you, what, 15 seconds, if that, Yeah. right? But that, that I remember that. And I remember those interactions every single time. And, and it, and it hits me right here because it's, it's honest and it's vulnerable and it's meaningful when you do that. Yeah. It's, you know, that's just something that I've, I've made kind of one of my signature moves for the people that I have a close relationship with. They're going to get that video message. And the cool thing about it, Jason, is it gets that quick response, right? I mean, everything is in that pyramid, right? I mean, there's, there's millions of people who play golf 
there's only a few that are PGA Tour players, right? There, anyone can buy, you know, uh, anyone has a place to live. Very few can live in a $5 million house, right? You got 300 messages wishing you happy birthday. You only got two video messages. So what, what, what can you do to stand out? You can me remember people's names. You can be polite, professional. You can be honest. You can be ethical. You know, those little things that push you to the top of the pyramid that are going to help you stand out. So, you know, figuring out what that thing is for you. Um, and look, the other, the other side effect that I've been sharing a lot with a lot of realtors is when you start doing video text messages one-to-one, -one, it starts making you feel a little more comfortable doing videos in general. Then you can start doing Instagram stories and you can start doing little Facebook stories and you can start doing messages that can be recorded. Then you can start, you know, recording a little more video. Then you can start maybe putting it on a tripod and talking and, and you're just getting over that fear of being on video which is something, Jason, I know when you talk, you know, to a lot of the audiences, um, it's something you and I are, are good with, but, you know, um, not everybody is, is comfortable. So starting with that video text is just such a simple way to do it. That's great. And, and, you know, it's a rep, right? All of these are reps to make us better for our next video, next live video, whatever it is. And, and no one's judging you. They're not, they're yeah. not sitting back and saying, wow, that was a horrible, like, no, we're, I mean, I, I'm acknowledging you uh, for putting yourself out there, right? Yeah. And, I, and I appreciate that. It's funny. One of the most, one of the most viewed Ted talks is Brene Brown's talk on vulnerability. Yep. <laughs> it's kind of ironic that the most people are watching to learn about how can I understand vulnerability? And, you know, some of the Ted talks are inspirational. Some are funny and some are, some are humorous. You know I mean? I should drop in the comments of this. My, one of my favorite Ted talks is the guy that, how do you respond to spam messages? Have you seen that guy? He's a, got a British accent, yeah. but he, you know, he gets the typical, like, you know, I need you to send me money because, you know, I'm in this African country or whatever. And it's, it's a hilarious. And th there's one of the most watched TED Talks, but then there's also the one about vulnerability. And so finding that thing that's going to make people listen because somebody out there shares your story. And if you can find that person that connects to your story, then, then you, you build a relationship circling it back to what we started this conversation about. I'm going to drop that video in the comments right now. Sean, the Brene Brown one, because I think that's a super powerful video for, for everyone yeah. to watch. Yeah. Um, it's a great video. And Brene Brown, if you're not familiar with her or any of her content, definitely follow her. She's uh, her, her and uh, Seth Godin are, are two people when it comes down to driving the authenticity factor of your outreach or just, you know, they're, they're the king and queen of that. Yeah. Brene Brown, John Maxwell, uh, you know, Seth Godin for sure. Um, you know, the, what we call thought leaders, uh, you know, Vaynerchuk yeah. to, to a lot of people in sales. Um, the cool thing about the thought leaders of the world, Seth is one of my favorites, you know, Steve Jobs behind you on your wall there. Um, so thought leaders don't care what you think. They care that you think. And there's yeah. a big difference there. They're not trying to tell you what to think. They're just trying to make you think. That's why Seth Godin's blog each day, you know, sometimes it's just like, man, that's, yeah, I, I, I gotta, yeah. you know, it makes you think. And that's, that's, what's cool about being a thought leader. Yeah. Um, all right. So, so Sean, I want to ask you last tips to drive those meaningful conversations on social. I want to I want to just cover a couple that we've touched on and then add, add any that you like, but obviously, you know, when we are putting out content, make sure that we're, we're driving up those, those comments uh, with responses, right. That are going to drive further conversations down. Don't just leave a comment static. Drive, that, that's someone who's wanting to interact with you. So drive that conversation down. Um, obviously ask the easy questions, right? And ask questions that are relevant to who you are. Uh, that's the biggest piece where we're, we're looking at what do I post? What's an easy question that's going to drive an easy response? And what is that question that's relevant to your interests and your hobbies in your life? Right? Like we talked about, engage with the, with the commenters, use stories, use questions and stories to drive those. I love what you said, Sean, about, you know, driving, you know, posting on your, on your, on your newsfeed with a question is connection, driving questions and stories is relationships because we're driving it to one-on-one -on -one conversation. So using stories to ask questions, to drive one-on-one -on -one meaningful conversations is huge, huge. Sending videos, whether through text, Facebook Messenger, Instagram Stories, Instagram mes Messenger, but sending meaningful one-to-one -one videos. Um, what I like to do too is, Sean, I like to also use just direct mes message on Facebook just For to sure. ask how someone's doing, just check For in. Sure. How are you doing? Yeah. How's your life? What's, what's going on in your world? I'm not asking for anything in return. I'm just connecting with them because, you know, again, giant open rate with, with messenger and it's an easy way to start that conversation. Let me, let me interrupt, let me interrupt you there, Jason. You know, it yeah. reminds me of the, the, you know, how, how technology has replaced what we used to have. 
you know, remember like the Larry King live shows, um, you know, he's, he was talking to literally millions of people, but then he would take calls and he'd go like, Houston, hello. And he would talk to that one person in Houston or in Texas. And that person got to be like, oh my God, I'm on the air with, you know, I used to be a, a big fan of calling sports radio. And when you can go from talking to everybody, once again, to talk to that one person on the DM, it goes from a conversation or a connection to a relationship. And I, I love that you are point that out, Jason, that you take a second to see something and it makes you, I'm going to take it offline to that private conversation, which makes that person feel special too. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, anything else you want to, you want to ask? Yeah, let me, let me, let me, uh, let me, let me finish maybe with this. And it, you know, I, we can leverage technology over the next 30 days. And even when the, when this whole COVID-19 thing is over, Jason, and use technology to connect, right? And that C-O-N-N-E-C-T is such an easy little acronym. Think about this. C stands for conversation. That's what social media is designed to do. It's not designed for you to be a one-way talker. It's designed to elicit and create conversations. The O stands for observation. Use technology to observe what's happening around you in your community, in your local town, in your state, in the nation, in the world, right? And, and observe what's happening, the pictures, the stories, the current interests, the trending topics. The first N stands for new relationships. What a great opportunity to create some new relationships. Um, if you are constantly on someone that you follow, whether it's a Seth Godin or a, or a Gary Vinerchuk, or it's a local uh, person providing content, your local broker owner or whatever, and you see the same name, keep com commenting in the thread with the same thoughts and ideas and concepts as you, connect with that person, create a new relationship. And maybe when this whole thing's all said and done, you get a chance to take that online relationship offline. Um, the second N stands for now. What's happening right now? Technology allows us to do that. On Facebook, you can you know, open up the feed that's called most recent instead of the top stories and see who's posting right now. On Twitter, you see what's happening right now. On certainly IG Live and Facebook Live, you're seeing what's happening right now. On Zoom, you're seeing what's happening right now. So that's a great tool. The E stands for engagement. Right? Without engagement, you're just talking to yourself. So you're trying to elicit responses. You're trying to get engagement. And then as you pointed out, so 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 wisely, Jason, don't just be happy you're getting comments. Go in and recognize those comments by commenting on the comments or, you know, Chris Smith always says the fortunes in the follow-up, right? The, the, the growth of your, of your feed is inside the feed itself. The second C stands for consistency. And that's where, you know, you and I, I think, are, are strong is that we're, we have a consistent voice and message and story and, you know, my build relationships, solve problems, have fun. Even though it's my philosophy and kind of my tagline, people kind of know that as that's my thing. Right? People don't mistake Nike as what, what, what's their thing? Like do it every once in a while or think about, Oh, it does right. Just do it. Right. It, it, yeah. it, you know it. And then, and then the last part of connect the T is trust. If you do the things we <clears throat> talked about, you can earn trust. And once again, face to face, making the same consistent message, all those things, right? Conversation, observation, new relationships, now engagement, consistency, and trust. That's how you build relationships through technology. Oh, that was perfect, man. <laughs> you probably just wrote that down too. <laughs> I, I use that in my class, but I did just write it down because I, I don't have my slide in front of me, but it, it's kind of easy how, it, how you remember it because it's just that little oh, easy, that. you know, if I want to connect with people, if I do those things individually and then as a whole, um, and, and look, those things work technology wise, but they also work direct mail wise. They also work face to face wise. They also work yeah. day to day business wise. And so just a neat little lesson that we can learn. And once again, guys, we have been given 30 days in solitary confinement, so to speak, to think about yeah. what we can do to be better when we come out of this, right? And yeah. it reminds me of my favorite movie, Shawshank Redemption, right? When Andy goes two, two weeks in the hole for playing the, the opera music over the speakers, right? And, and the warden throws him in the hole for, for two weeks and he comes out and the guys in the, in the prison are talking and they say, you know, what'd you do in there for two weeks? You must have gone crazy. And he goes, no, I didn't go crazy. I had that, I had those girls singing in my soul. I listened to the words that they were singing and I just kept playing that. And, that, and we have a chance to do that, you know, to come out of here, you know, to, to break out of here, so to speak, to use the Shawshank metaphor, break out of this and, and be free men and women, you know, in a, in a you know, Jason Perkins 2.0, when this is all said and done, Sean Carpenter 2.0, insert your name here 2.0, do the work now so that when that happens, yes. you're ready to go. Yes. 
That's it, Sean. Do the work now. That's awesome. That's a great way to end it. Dude, thanks so much for, hey, for jumping on the live. This is fun. Appreciate what you're doing, man. And, and all these conversations you've been having with people and uh, Nick Capretta and Joey Thomas, and, and I'm honored to be on with those guys and, uh, and keep it up over the, over the next thing. And once again, don't make this a until we're keep doing it. Cause I think you're seeing value in the people that are following it. And I know I, I appreciate it as well. So when it's all said and done, let's get together for a beer. And until then let's get together for a virtual beer. That's right, man. All right. See you guys. Be good.